That's right. <laughs> on a Saturday. I, I could come. No, not on Saturdays. Hey, everybody. We're in the radio show, radio station today. Julie's with me. And that's Adam. He he thinks he's in charge just because he sits on the other side of the glass. But we all know who's really in charge around here, right? So um, we're going to be talking about mortgage brokers. And I hope y'all can hear me. I'm just going to put you over here kind of in the corner so you can just see what we do and how we do it. And hopefully you can learn something too. Okay? All right, Adam, back to you. I left my cheat sheet out there. Oh, where? Hang on. I got us trapped in here. I need back out. Man, left everything out here with you. Brought my water in like I knew what I was doing. Good morning. Happy Saturday. I hope you are enjoying this beautiful East Tennessee day. Uh, the birds are chirping outside and I know it's just going to be fabulous. And happy Memorial Day weekend also. So if you're going out, make sure that you're also looking at some empty houses. If you're going to your friends or your parents or somewhere that you don't usually go, make sure you are looking for opportunities on your drive. Okay. Always have your eyes open and you're looking for different opportunities if you're going to be a real estate investor. All right, again, my name is Whitney Nosley, and I am the broker for Whitney Buys Houses, and you guessed it, I buy houses. <laughs> so today in the studio, Julie Anderson Thacker is my real estate bestie. She was with me last week, and she's hey. here again this morning. Hey, Julie. Hey. Good morning. We have a fun show today. We will do some ranting and some raving about some different people in the real estate business, um, some people that you need through the process, but they aren't maybe as loud and proud as a realtor or real estate agent. They kind of work their way into the process, but they're not what you see in the very beginning. And then they are some people that you're going to need to work with. So you need to go ahead and kind of have them on the front of your mind. And that's going to be um, inspectors, appraisers, and mortgage brokers. And we'll get into them more in just a second. But Julie, I want to ask you a pop quiz real quick. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> so let's say that a house has been on the market for a year or two, okay. and it's at least been with two or three different agents by that point, probably, okay. right? Right. So why, if you, ha if you have one word to describe why that property's been on the market for two or three years and not had any offers, what is that one word? I'm going to say overpriced. Overpriced. I was going with price, but overpriced is, <laughs> that's it. I mean, absolutely. If your house has been on the market for two or three years, there's not a buyer in your bracket for that. And if it's 150 or less, 150,000 or less, your house either needs some work. Yep. Or your house is just a disaster. It's very undesirable for some reason. There is a reason because in Knoxville today, if your house is under 150000 and you don't immediately start getting some bites on it, something is wrong. And I'm sorry. Yep. That is I, the truth. 
from the bottom of my heart, I am so, so sorry to tell you that. I know buyers who won't look at properties that have been on the market over 30 days because yeah. they assume something is wrong with it. Absolutely. If your property has been on the market for two years, it's not your agent's fault. Nope. I'm so, so sorry to tell you all that, but it's not your agent's fault. It's your price or it's your property. And more than likely, it's your price because yeah. the property, investors, buyers, we can all work with a couple issues. We can work with shag carpet. We can work with ugly paint. We can work with all sorts of different things. But what we can't do is, you know, give you an offer for half price that, that'll just offend you. Yep. So we're just not putting in any offers. So I'm sorry y'all, but it's your price. Yep. Get your price right, have a good heart to heart with your agent, or find a new agent that's gonna have that heartbreaking talk with you. Well, if you've been through multiple agents in two or three years, they've probably told you. They've probably told you what to do to fix the situation. You're just not listening. You're not listening. On the way to the gym, I go to the gym Tuesdays and Thursdays morning. Tuesday and Thursday mornings, and there is a house. I looked at it before it was listed, okay? They <laughs> called Whitney Buys Houses. I went, I made them an offer, and they're like, <gasps> I can't take that much for this house. I've got all these memories here. <laughs> oh, gosh. Your memories don't matter to me. Nope. They, they don't, don't ma matter to any buyer. They don't matter to any buyer. I don't care what happened in that house and how great it was for you. You need to stay there. If you're wanting to sell it, forget it. That's right. So... I saw it listed, I saw it sit there, I saw the reduced sign, <laughs> little rider come up, I saw the new agent sign, I saw it sit there, I saw the reduced rider come up on it again, and just last week, there is a third agent on the house, and I haven't looked it up once because it's overpriced. And the common denominator is <laughs> the price. No <laughs> it's not the agent. Nope. The agents are doing everything they can, and it's probably new agents that you have coming in here because they don't want to break your heart. They don't want to tell you that you're overpriced. They don't want to tell you that it's not going to be able to sell if it is stacked floor to ceiling, basement to attic with junk. Get that stuff out of there. Realtors are not paid to say yes to you. <laughs> what? What? They, they are paid <laughs> to set realistic expectations. What? Say that again. That's awesome. Say that again. <laughs> like, make sure y'all are listening to this. You are not paying a realtor to say yes to you or to somehow make you happy or feel good about your property. You are paying them to set realistic expectations on how to sell your house. And a lot of people don't want an agent to come in and say, well, you need to, you know, if on a listing appointment I come in and I say that you need to do these three things before I'll even list it. Okay. Some sellers don't want to hear that. They think their property is perfect. They don't want to do anything. Well, that's fine, but I'm not your girl. Nope. I'm not spending my marketing and my advertising, and I'm not putting my name and my sign on this property until it meets my criteria. I'm not going to waste my time on a property that's going to sit there. No. Why would I? I, I, I can go lose two other houses and get them sold. Absolutely. I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm here to make some <laughs> money, and if your house is going to drag down my system... I'm not fooling with it. Realistic expectations. Uh, that being said, I have a nine unit apartment complex in East Knoxville. Uh, it also has a house on it, it's two parcels, and we're trying to sell it pretty quickly. I got it marked at 30,000. It's not on the MLS, so if you're searching the MLS, you're not gonna see it. Cash. Cash, baby, I want that cash. Uh, but you can see it on WhitneyBuysHouses.com. I saw it. <laughs> Julie saw it, she showed it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you can also see it on our Facebook page, Whitney Buys Houses. All right, so getting into it, you want to talk about inspectors, appraisers, or mortgage brokers first, Julie? Mm. Let's start. I, I want to start with the inspectors. Okay, I like it. You need inspectors. I'm a general contractor, therefore the state of Tennessee says that technically I can inspect houses. And since I buy my own houses, that's pretty cool because I don't have to pay an inspector to go and tell me there's a leak in the bathroom. That's fantastic. I can see that. But homeowners, home buyers, maybe new investors, they do need that inspector. They want that 500 page document to come back to them that says this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and this is wrong. They need to fix this one though before you buy it. Yes, exactly. And that's an inspector's job is to find everything wrong. If they don't find something wrong with the house, even if it's brand new, they didn't do their job, right? Inspectors are going to find problems. They have to justify their fee. A woman told me a couple of weeks ago that she was thinking about listing her house, and this was in Georgia, so 
not in Tennessee, but in Georgia, I was talking to a woman and she was going to list her house in the next couple of weeks and she said, well, I'm just going to go through and fix everything that's wrong with it so the inspector won't find anything. <laughs> Cute. Yeah, I laugh too because what an inspector is going to find that's wrong with the house may not be what you think is wrong with the house. Correct. And when I was selling dump trucks, my papa told me to give them a light bulb. Let the headlight be out, let a tail light be out so that I can fix something. So don't go through and fix everything and make it perfect because in the negotiations, you want something from the inspector to say, okay, I'll fix this, I won't fix that. Yeah, if, if, if you're, you know there's a problem, it's okay to leave it. Let the inspector find it because you're going to fix it anyway. And it looks like you're being very helpful. Yeah, I mean, if but if you have a hole in the floor... Fix that. Yeah, you do yeah. want to fix that. But if you've got... You know, a light bulb that's apartments. I love a really thick, really detailed, lots of pictures, lots of colors, lots of um, red lines, suggestions, um, other people maybe I need to call in on stuff. So what would a good inspector, a good inspection report look like to you as a buyer? I, I think it needs to be thorough because here's the deal. The seller's not going to fix everything on that list, nor should they. If it involves caulk around the window, you can do that. But this gives you a prioritized list of upcoming maintenance that you're going to have to do on your brand new house. Is this something that you should fear going into selling your house? No. No. I, I feel like some people, you know, they call Whitney buys houses because, well, she won't get an inspection. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I do get an inspection. I'm going to find out what's wrong with it. If, if, they're, if they're being represented by a realtor, they're going to get an inspection. Oh, for sure. For sure. So uh, we will be back. We're going to continue the inspection and inspect sure, uh, inspector conversation here in a couple minutes. Um, but we're also going to talk about mortgage brokers. And we're not really talking about them like we're throwing them under the bus or anything here. We're just letting you know the process so that when your agent brings you through this step-by-step -step process, you are aware of it. And a lot of people call me and they're like, hey, I'm using another agent, but I need to know who your inspector is. Who do you use for mortgage? And I'm like, why didn't you call me? Why? <laughs> your agent should have these people lined up for you also. So you can call me, but your agent should also know inspectors and appraisers and mortgage brokers. Again, you're listening to All Real Estate All the Time. My name is Whitney Nicely, and I'm the broker for Whitney Buys Houses. Give us a call at 865-309-4500. Break time. Yay. We'll be back for our next segment in just a second. Oh, somebody's trying to call me. Can't call me during the radio show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> can y'all hear okay? Give me some hearts. Can you hear me? You like the inspector conversation? Okay, good. You can hear us. Okay, good. It's like, how will they tell you? <laughs> they can give us hearts if they can hear Aww. us. And they leave little comments right here. Have you periscoped before? No. It's super fun. Come here. Y'all, this is my friend Julie. Hi. She's an agent in Knoxville, too. She's the best property manager we have in Knoxville. The best. Y'all say hello so she can see how this works. It's see, they give us hearts. Oh, they're green when they like well somebody when you sign on you get a color assigned to you every time you sign on it's a different color so who's that v v wit he's green so these are his cool. green hearts that are coming up cute and he's red they say good morning julie hey so whenever the red hearts come up that's who's saying cool hello. it's super fun Okay, so Jason and I had a bad experience with an investor in Georgia. Uh-oh. What happened? I don't know what he did. He gave us a packet with like 10 pages in it. We were in a hurry, so we just went with it. And it was the house we live in. Nice. He's got old termite damage that he didn't find. Pretty wow. sure he opened the uh, crawl space door, went, picture, done. Looks good. Mm. I want my inspector to be there for no less than four hours. 
pretty darn close. Yeah. On our apartments, they're there all day. They bought oh, like, a day yeah. or a day and a half. Yeah. Yeah, I like a good inspection. We need to open this one. Okay, you ready for us again? Do it. I have such a cute little jingle for this early in the morning. Isn't it nice? <laughs> I love it. Okay, you're listening to Whitney Nicely. This is all real estate all the time. Um, my friend Julie is in the studio with me today. Hello. And we are talking about inspectors and inspections when you're buying houses or selling houses. We're also talking about appraisers that the bank is probably going to hire. Or you could yep. have a third-party company sure. come in and appraise the property for you. Uh, and then we're going to talk about mortgage brokers. And when I say we're talking about them, I'm not down in them. I'm not, you know down on anybody or anything like that, I am letting you know that these are people in the process. When you're buying or selling, you're going to encounter inspectors, appraisers, and mortgage brokers, unless you're paying all cash. Then if you're paying all cash, that was my word of the day last week, is all cash. So you just pay your cash and go on. But if you're getting a loan or your buyer is getting a loan, there's going to be an inspector, an appraiser, and a mortgage broker, if not a whole team of them. <laughs> if you're paying off cash, you should still get an inspection. Yes, 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 and yes. And an appraisal. Yes, and if you're paying all cash on just land, like I do, you need the survey too. Yep. But we'll, we'll, we may get into surveyors too. <laughs> all right, so we were talking about inspections and inspectors, and I, I've got to tell you that my husband and I bought a house in Georgia last year, and I'm not going to say we had the worst inspector ever, but... Close. We was pretty close, yeah. Um, when we got the inspection back, we were kind of crunched. We needed to close. We had everything ready. We were just waiting on the inspection. Uh, we weren't really asking for anything to be done from the inspection. It was just kind of a formality. We needed one. Well, it came back, and it was like 10, maybe 15 pages. There's like six or seven pictures. Um, oh. Pretty sure he opened the crawl space door, took a picture of the basement, and went, yeah, it looks good. Because now that we've been in the house for a year, and after you've been in the house for a while, you kind of find some things that are wrong and maybe not perfect. And the house was built in the 70s, so you know we were okay with that. But we found old termite damage that was pretty obvious once you actually looked that he should have seen. Um, we also found some other things like with the windows. You can see sunlight around the windows Ooh. if you start, stand at a certain angle. And I feel like an inspector should have found that if he, if he spent adequate time in the house you know you can almost just feel it standing in the room that there's wind coming through from somewhere uh -huh. and no we didn't see it when we checked out the property to be honest we looked at it twice and just kind of measured the second time <laughs> and then we just bought it. it it was a quick situation um it's not anything that i would recommend but you know i buy houses all the time so i got kind of cocky on myself but <laughs> with the inspection you want an inspector that is just so thorough i mean i know on my inspections if i'm representing a buyer or if i'm representing a seller and the inspector is there for an hour or two nope. they didn't check out the property enough you, I want my inspector to be there for three or four hours. Okay. I want them, usually they like to start their um, day early in the morning. I want them on the roof already inspecting the property when I get there just to say hi. Exactly. Yep. They can start inspecting the property, and you, you may or may not go. They don't care. What you see and like about the house, they don't care. It doesn't influence it one way or another. But some people like to go and shake their hand, and it feels like that helps them. I tell my, especially my first-time home buyers to show up the last hour mm -hmm. so the inspector can kind of go through the report with them a little bit and explain some items to them. That's a really good tip. Yes. Very good. Okay, so the last hour that they're there, they're kind of wrapping up. They've got a good idea of the house in their head and they can come through and say, you may want to check on this next year. You want to do this. Exactly. They, they probably say you need to change the air filters. <laughs> Some people don't know how to do that. Some people don't know. The inspector is the first person to tell them that they need to change the air filters. You don't want to be there the entire inspection because then you're underfoot. I feel like inspectors do not appreciate that. So I always say the last hour, show up and go through. Because uh, he's going to point some things out. He will actually show you items on that list. Which is good for your frame of reference too. He should also take 
couple hundred pictures of at it least too, from a couple different angles that say this could be a problem it is right now or it is not right now but it could be down the road so you want to keep an eye on this particular area and a lot of good inspectors know based on your financing <laughs> what's going to come up as an issue absolutely so say uh, even carpet yeah different threads different styles of carpet are FHA and not FHA approved it's crazy so if you are selling a house you want to make sure that when you buy carpet to get rid of that old dog smell or old cat smell <laughs> that you are putting carpet in the house that is going to help somebody get financed yes don't let them miss their financing because you didn't put an FHA approved carpet in the property exactly and your carpet person dealer um, I've got a great guy if you want to call me I'll tell you who it is but he tells me every time if I'm getting FHA or not and if it's just a rental house maybe I care maybe I don't right but most of them on the market are FHA yep but check with the flooring guy too all right you got anything else about inspections that people need to look out for it does not need to be a source of anxiety though they're gonna no. find something wrong that's their job and if they're good at it they'll find the right things that are wrong yes if you notice something looks kind of weird, you can give them a heads up. Maybe they want to investigate this or that more. I have a story. Go ahead, tell me. <laughs> well, as you may have heard on last week's show, I am currently house shopping <laughs> for myself and my husband. Which is a different experience than shopping for investors. Oh, very different, very different. But I have a good team of people that I work with, and I have contractors, I have roofers. The listing stated they were give, giving a roofing allowance. Can they do that? Can they state there's a roofing allowance? <sighs> you shouldn't. They, they can. But they did. Guess what? That a savvy realtor that I am <laughs> said, oh, there must be a problem with the roof. I think I'll take my roofer to go check that out while I'm over there. Absolutely. Good plan. Uh, She's smart cookie. Guess what? That roof is bad. Bad, bad. Bad. And I was told, well, the seller wasn't sure that the roof was bad. I'm like, uh, your listing confirms that with the allowance on there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have put it in black and white. Exactly. So, so did you get through the inspection process in this house, or no? <laughs> um, me having the roofer over uh, freaked the seller out just a little bit. Was the seller there? No. Well, oh, good. She, mm, yeah, she showed She's up. At the neighbors. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you're showing your house. Go away. Go away. And expect that people are going to look at everything, they're especially gonna, if you've alerted them already to a problem. Yeah, but they're going to open the cabinets. They're going to look at yeah. the closets. Yeah. They're going to go through your stuff, so don't leave anything there that and, you don't want people to see. And my husband is in the termite business, so, you know, sometimes people get in the crawl spaces when they look at a house. <laughs> <laughs> but they're looking at it. They're not just saying, is it pretty? Uh -huh. Is it functional? They are really looking at this for an investment. So if you're selling it, you need to be ready to have it wide open for the world. Yes. So I actually do a pre-inspection inspection, inspection <laughs> with my team. <laughs> I, smart. That way you don't pay the inspector. Well, I was going to pay the inspector, but I, I needed to know on a couple of items that just alerted me just from the listing. Like, what am I getting into? So do I want to make an offer on this house if the roof is bad? The roof was bad, though. It was bad. Was there anything else that alerted you, even just driving up to the property, that something may be wrong? Um, just driving up to the property, no. And I had done a drive by the day it came on market. I'd seen the pictures; it was pretty. <laughs> so I went to see Good it. Good curb appeal. Good curb appeal. Yes. Um, there were a couple of other items. Um, whenever we actually looked at the house, I'm not going to bring those up. The house is still on the market right now, so. That's okay. Best of luck to you. That's right. <laughs> All right. So I feel like we've covered inspectors and inspections. Yeah, and if you want to call me, you can call the office. Uh, it's Whitney Buys Houses, 865-309-4500. I'll tell you, you know, inspectors or inspections or different things you should be looking for. And Julie, you're with a different company. Will you just go ahead and put that out there? Oh, yeah. I'm with Tennessee Valley Realty Associates. I'm a licensed realtor and property, property manager, the best one in Knoxville. That's right. So if you need a property manager, you can call her. If you also just need some advice on inspections or inspectors, you can call either one of us. 
All right, so let's let's talk about the next stage of the game. We've got past the inspection, we know what's wrong, and we're ready to make an offer. We get our offer approved, and we're probably already at this point working with a mortgage broker. Correct. When you yes. start looking at houses, your agent, your realtor that's showing you, that's working on behalf of you as the buyer, they should make sure that you have a pre-qualification letter from your mortgage broker, right? I do not show houses until I have a pre-qual letter. But Julie, I'll, I'll get it. I mean, I'm fine for it. I just want to see this one house on this Sunday afternoon. No, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe the one, but then you gotta go get pre-qualified yeah. before you see another one. Yeah. You can't do anything without that pre-qualification. I'm not gonna submit an offer for you. So why look at a house that you can't make an offer on if you're not pre-qualified yet? And as an auctioneer, I'm not gonna allow you to bid if I haven't seen your pre-qual letter or your um, letter from the bank that says you have a million dollars that you can spend on my property. It's just the smart way to do things because whenever you find that house that you're so in love with, you wanna be able to write up an offer right then. Because as we talked about earlier, if the price is right, it's gonna sell. It's gonna sell. And if you're not ready with your prequal letter, then you're not gonna be the buyer on that property. So before you go falling in love, go find yourself a mortgage broker. Yes. All right, so we're talking about mortgage brokers and then we're gonna talk about appraisers. Um, but you're listening to All Real Estate All The Time. My name is Whitney Nosley and I'm the broker with Whitney Buys Houses. If you have something you wanna sell quickly, call 865-309-4500. All right, you people are gonna have to listen to the radio show. Okay, I'm gonna cut you off now. It was fun though. <laughs>